This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support on Gun Guy TV. I really appreciate it. Please check out all of these other alternative locations where we post videos. So if you're watching on YouTube, you may want to subscribe to one of those just in case something happens on YouTube. Periodically, they delete a video for reasons I can't figure out. And if that happens, you'll always find those videos at these other locations. Also, you might check out the Gun Guy TV Firearms Podcast. That is growing like crazy, and you can listen to it on all of your favorite podcast players. It comes out on the 5th and the 20th. Uh, in fact, the next one will be coming up in uh, just a few days. We'll be posting also a video version on the various distribution places for video, so you can always listen to it there if you like. Tonight we'll be having the first in a series of live streams. I'm starting to do live streams on YouTube at 6 p.m. Pacific time on the second Tuesday of the month, just to connect with you, talk about whatever's uh, the hot topic of the day, and uh, chat a little bit with you one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which I, I really enjoy doing. So the live stream tonight is 6 p.m. Pacific time. That's 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Check it out. Okay. Now, <laughs> the Savage Access to in 30-06. Why 30-06? Well, because I, I happen to like that particular caliber personally. I could have gotten a 308. I already have a 308. I wanted a bolt gun in 06, and so that's what I bought. And a buddy of mine had suggested I buy the Savage Access 2. I'm very glad that he did, although I do have a couple of interesting stories about it I'll tell you here in just a second. So the, the rifle comes as you see it, minus a couple of things. It does not come with the little uh, raised pad here. I put this here because I'm kind of a big guy and tall, and it gives me a, a solid cheek weld as I'm trying to see through the optics. So I added that. I found it made the gun easier to shoot and easier to get on the shoulder, and it fits me better. Having been a shotgunner for a long time, I'm, I'm a big... To me, a, a rifle or shotgun has to fit in order for it to come up to my shoulder and be in the proper position for my eye to be right behind the sights, or in the case of a shotgun, for my eye to act as the rear sight so I can follow through and get the bird. This rifle didn't come that way, which is fine, and it doesn't come with adjustable stock. So putting this little pad on the, on the back lifted up the comb enough that it makes the rifle fit me perfectly. So I really like that. I really like the butt pads, very soft, but it's, it's firm. It's not so soft as being squishy, but it gives me some, uh, some pad on the recoil. It's a 30 out 6 It's not... You know, it's not kicking like something. It's not like a 338 Lapua or something. It's not beating me up like that. Um, it, it's an 6 it, it has some kick to it, but like I said, I'm 230 pounds, and so I don't really. It doesn't. The, the recoil is not damaging to me. I enjoy shooting it. It's not a big deal. I suppose a smaller person might be impacted by it more, just because of the size to recoil ratio, if there is such a thing. Now, the rifle has a couple of features I really like. The barrel is free floated, and it comes that way. But my favorite thing, honestly, is the AccuTrigger. I think that's what they call it. That trigger on this gun is absolutely magnificent. I cannot say enough about it. I love the trigger on this rifle. I like the, I mean, it's so crisp and so clean. On a very inexpensive, what people are arguably would call an entry-level hunting rifle, to have a trigger like that, is amazing. I was stunned by the price. I bought the rifle, I don't know, uh, four or five months ago, and I'm not going to quote a price here because as this video gets older, people are going to go, how did you get that? But I will tell you they're very, very inexpensive and uh, for a, a solid quality hunting rifle. Now, they're, they, I've, I, this one is very accurate. I've seen others that were extremely accurate, and I've seen others with accuracy that was really good. So it kind of goes in the really good, excellent, extremely excellent, and it depends on the rifle you get. They, it just depends. I mean, what I haven't seen is any of them that are complete dogs where accuracy is concerned. I, maybe you've seen one. I haven't. This one is in the middle. It's not extraordinarily accurate, and it's not the accuracy isn't good. It's actually excellent. Now, having said that, I really struggled with the rifle when I first got it, because when you get it, they tell you that the scope it comes with, which was this little weaver a three to nine variable scope, which is okay. It's not great, but 
considering your, what you're spending on the rifle, that you're getting an optic at all is really astounding. And, you know, Weaver makes good little optics. They're made in China. And it's a solid little optic. It's just not really what I wanted on the rifle, which is why there's something else there. And I'll explain that in a minute. But even with this optic, they're supposedly, it's bore-sided. <laughs> well, not so much, actually, because I put a target out this big <laughs> at 25 yards and at 50 yards, and it wasn't even on the paper. So I bore-sided it because obviously they hadn't, and I actually was able to get it on paper. And then the other thing I discovered is as I'm shooting the rifle, I'm, I'm shooting it, and I'm, it's, it's accurate for a minute, and then I get a weird flyer, and it's accurate, and then I get a weird flyer, and then I get a couple over here, and a couple over here, and a couple over here. It drove me kind of cuckoo. I, and, you know, you'd think, since I've been shooting since I was five years old and I'm in my 60s, that it would have dawned on me to see if the optic was tightened down properly. But I made the assumption, you know what happens when you assume, that from the factory they would actually take that somewhere at Savage, somebody might own one of these and actually torque the, uh, the scope, uh, scope rings down to the factory torque setting. Uh, well, they didn't. And so as a result, there was a lot of wiggling going on with the with the optic. And so it was quite frustrating. I thought I'd bought this rifle. I had a buddy told me that they're really accurate. And this thing is, you know, I'm getting four, six, eight inch groups at 100 yards. And I'm thinking, that's just ridiculous. Who sells a rifle that's got an eight inch group? Okay, well, then you can see, you know, that I, why I was frustrated. I, so finally, I got the rifle home. I didn't realize it until I got the rifle home. And then I picked the rifle up and I, I could hear the scope rattle. And I thought, oh, knucklehead. So it was not the rifle. It was the Joker behind it. So since then, so I, I tightened it back down, took it back out to the range, got it dialed in. The thing is, it's minute of angle at 100 yards all day long. It's, it's a one minute of angle gun, sometimes less, depending on the ammo that you select. So I'm, I'm thrilled with the accuracy of the rifle. It's extremely accurate. Uh, it's not, it doesn't stack them on top of each other, but they're within an inch. And for a hunting rifle, for crying out loud, I don't take shots generally beyond 250 yards anyway. So it's brilliant. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Now, I did a couple of things. As I said, I put this cheek little, I think it's 10 bucks, cheekies, stick on cheek pad here, not because the rifle was slapping me, it wasn't, but because I needed a higher comb on the stock in order to get my eye right behind the optic. And this solved that problem. That's about a $10 upgrade. It, it's very, very little. In fact, if I can find a link to these online, I'll, I'll put it in the description for you so you know what to get. You'll also see I've got other shotguns and rifles and like that that I have this little thing on. And it's only because I only need an eighth of an inch or I need a quarter of an inch or something in order to get my eye behind the optic or my eye where it needs to be on the gun. So that's a very inexpensive little addition. The other thing I put on it is this uh, Sig Sauer BDX scope, which is four and a half by 14. And uh, it comes with, when you get it, if you buy the, the kit, it comes with their range finder. And if you haven't seen any reviews on these, I'm actually going to do a review on the Sig uh, BDX system later on. <laughs> these things are really cool because once you get it dialed in, you range something and it, the indicator comes in on the scope showing you what your holdover is. And then if you want to combine windage or whatever and use the app on the phone, it'll even do more than that. So I'm, I'm very impressed with this uh, BDX system on this rifle. Now, the only thing is the rifle started out rather light. And once you put the, uh, the heavier optic on it, it picks up a little bit more weight. But truthfully, the rifle is so light that it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, for me, carting it around, I don't really care. I'd rather have the superior optic since I've got a rifle that's extremely accurate. So if I want to take that shot for some reason out at 400 yards, probably wouldn't go beyond that, but out to 400 yards, 450 or something, I know I can make that shot because I've got a better optic. I can see a little clearer. My eyes are getting older. I need really quality optics on the rifles that I get. Now, if you don't need that because you're young and you've got sharp eyes, frankly, the scope it comes with is, is really good. It's just inexpensive, a uh, little weaver scope. Plenty of, for what you need for deer hunting or any kind of hunting that you're doing, as long as you're not going to be reaching way, way out there. This was sent to me by Sig Sauer, I, and I thought, you know, to review, and I thought, well, I'm going to put it on this rifle and give it a shot. And uh, so I ordered some rings and put it on there, and I'm, I'm super impressed. So overall, I got to tell you, I really like the Savage Access 2. They call it an entry-level rifle, but I got to tell you, I... I 
I don't know why I would spend more money on a better, on what they would call a better rifle, unless I just wanted, you know, something that looked really pretty, but I don't care about what it looks like. I care about, does it get the job done, put meat in the pot. That's what's important to me. This thing is going to put meat in the pot for the rest of my life, and then I'll leave it to my son, and he can put meat in the pot uh, for the rest of his life and leave it to my grandkids. That's the way these things are built. So if you have not checked one out, I urge you to do it. This is the Savage Access 2. This one's in 30 6 They come in a bunch of different chamberings. I got a buddy, I think, one that's got one in 223 that he uses to hunt uh, javelina and other things, and he absolutely loves it. I've got a friend that's got one in 308. And so this thing has sort of gone around, and I've had two or three buddies ask me about uh, which rifle to buy recently, and I've said, you know, might want to check these out. In particular, because they're made well, they're very accurate, the trigger is phenomenal, and if you don't want to buy another optic, I mean, for crying out loud, it comes with a nice little 3 to 9 scope. Now, I'm going to use this on something else uh, rather than this rifle because I, with the BDX system, I just prefer it. But I will use this because it's actually a good little optic. So, uh, the one caution I would give you is don't believe it when they tell you it's bore sighted. <laughs> you know, it's, it might not be, and make sure that, don't be a... Uh, dunderhead like me <laughs> don't be a knucklehead make sure that you check to make sure that the the scope is torqued down properly and and look up whatever the uh, the torque ring uh, torque ratings are and and torque it down properly before you take it to the range you'll you'll save yourself a lot of frustration when you can't figure out why the rounds are going all over the place well there you are there's the savage x access 2 in 30-06 outstanding rifle i'll be hunting with it hopefully i've got two hunts i hope i can make it to this year uh, for sure, and then maybe a third one, so we're going to try that, and if we can do that, and I can manage to get video for you, I will do that, but one way or the other, I'll report back to you and let you know how this is working, and then you can also look for the in-depth review on the BDX system. I've actually used it quite a bit, and I've got uh, quite a bit of video uh, shooting it out at distance, but I'm going to get some more, and then probably right after SHOT Show, I'll get this up for you so you can see what the review is like with this optic and this uh, rangefinder and and their app which is really superior and how it functions on this rifle we'll get that done as uh, as soon as possible well thank you again very much for watching and for all of your support i really do appreciate it and uh, keep an eye out for that live stream tonight i'm going to be doing live streams on youtube from now on on the second tuesday of every month at 6 p.m pacific have a great week and thank you very much be safe <laughs>